For my life, I had to fight. Since the late 20th century, the image of black women as unbreakable and almost superhuman has dominated TV and film. I've been only human my whole life. I want to be something else now. I want to be a warrior. The strong black woman character type on screen can be identified by some key features. She does not tolerate BS. So when in doubt, shut your mouth. She has a strong moral compass and holds others accountable. Listen up, Andrews. You are in free fall and I am not having it. She's a natural nurturer. And stop putting your head down in my house. You know my rule. It's all love and all pride in this house. Channeling her strength into helping others, sometimes even to the point that she disregards her own needs. She's a high performer. I analyze the barometer levels for air displacement, friction, and velocity by hand. The strong black woman has likely had to outperform her mostly white and or male peers in order to get where she is. Twice as good. Twice as good as them to get half of what they have. Perhaps most centrally, this character has endured extreme hardships in her life and overcome them. I had to fight my daddy. I had to fight my uncles. I had to fight my brothers. Girl, child ain't safe in a family man's. The adversity she's lived through has become a source of her inner power and helped define her code of personal ethics. The strong black woman can be seen as selfless strength personified, the human embodiment of the maxim that what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Although black women of immeasurable strength do exist in real life, in recent years, popular culture has begun to recognize the toll that having to manifest this superhuman strength takes on black women, both on screen and off. Black women out here trying to save everybody, and what do we get? Here's our take on the strong black woman on screen, how she's evolved, and why she deserves a world that doesn't require her to be so strong all the time. The most disrespected person in America is the black woman. The most unprotected woman, a person in America is the black woman. You're watching The Take. Thanks for watching and be sure to share and subscribe. While black characters have had a place in American film since its invention, African-American writers, directors, and even actors were largely absent from mainstream early filmmaking. Do you know why we're called the Pussycats? Because we have to claw our way into the same rooms that you can just waltz into. As a result, black characters generally were reduced to stereotypes. During the early rise of film, the predominant characterization of black womanhood was the mammy. Oh, now, Miss Scarlett, you come on and be good and eat just little, No! Honey. A trope most famously personified by Hattie McDaniel's character in the Civil War and Reconstruction era set film, Gone with the Wind. Just hold on and suck in! The Mammy was a nurturing, friendly, always smiling black woman, generally a slave or servant, who functioned to justify the mistreatment and subjugation of African Americans based on the false claim that they enjoyed serving white families. My own house? You gonna send me away, Miss B? I can't live with you? Oh, honey child, please don't send me away. Starting in the 1970s, black exploitation movies ushered in the popularity of another equally harmful stereotype, the Jezebel trope. You are going to turn down the like this? Which portrays black women as sexually insatiable and animalistic in their desires. I'm told that you are a dangerous man, Arturo. I like that. It excites me. The Jezebel actually existed long before the movies made it mainstream. This damaging myth was used to justify sexual abuse of black women during and after American slavery. The third prominent stereotype of black women is the sapphire, also known as the angry black woman. Why are you always turning me into the angry black woman? Because you are. Are you kidding me? I'm the stereotype? The sapphire imagines black women as irrational, quick-tempered, and often emasculating to their male partners. What's with the stocking cap, bruh? Face it, the hair's gone gone! 
This trope reflects society's fear of anger in black women. And because those who speak out against discrimination or mistreatment are often dismissed as fitting this stereotype, I would never make this about race. Black women are trapped in an impossible situation where they must suppress their emotions, even in the face of unfairness. Throughout the history of film, all three of these stereotypes have functioned to paint black women as inferior and limit their upward mobility. Then enter the strong black woman. What are you trying to do, kill me? I damn well ought to, you rotten bastard. Her modern image began to take shape in the 1950s and 60s during the black liberation movement. This right here is the next great battle. Celebrated figures of that period like Rosa Parks and Coretta Scott King inspired many through being characterized in this way. While looking back, we can see that this portrait has deeper roots in their predecessors during the abolitionist movement. And there's nothing more you can do. Don't you tell me what I can't do. In her 2011 book, Sister Citizen, sociologist Melissa Harris Perry writes that this trope was constructed by black women as a way to escape the pervasive negative stereotypes of the Mammy, Jezebel, and Sapphire. Seemingly the opposite of those harmful cliches, the strong black woman is a beacon of superiority. She's extraordinary, even immune to obstacles and pain. I'm Harriet Tubman leader this group. We do what I say. However, Harris Perry claims that this identity is possibly just as limiting as its historical antecedents, writing, by adopting and reproducing the icon of the strong black woman, African-American women help craft an expectation that they should be autonomously responsible and self-denying caregivers in their homes and communities. In The Color Purple, the 1985 film based on Alice Walker's novel of the same name, Whoopi Goldberg played Seely, a black woman who endures a life of assault at the hands of her father and husband before finally becoming self-sufficient. I'm poor, black, I may even be ugly, but dear God, I'm here. The women in The Color Purple are some of the earliest mainstream examples of the strong black woman trope in film. Girl, you ought to bash Mr. Head head open and think about heaven later. They are strong-willed, morally righteous, and nurturing, even though they have endured unimaginable hardship. Speaking of her character, Sophia, Oprah Winfrey said, She's a combination of all the women and who I think make up such a strong legacy for black women. In 2013's 12 Years a Slave, Lupita Nyong'o gave an Oscar-winning performance as Patsy, an enslaved woman on the plantation where the protagonist is wrongfully sold into slavery. Patsy's strength is demonstrated both physically, as she outperforms every other slave on the plantation. 500 pounds of cotton, day in, day out, more than any man here. And emotionally, as she endures violence and sexual abuse. Queen of Fields, she is. The titular character in the 2009 film Precious, based on the novel Push by Sapphire, faces abuse from both of her parents before eventually finding out that she is HIV positive. Beat me, rape me, make me feel worthless, make me sick. Though only a teenager, Precious embodies the maturity of the strong black woman through her unselfish pursuit of a better life for her children, even when she has very little hope for herself. I just want to be a good mother. Significantly, even though the idea of the strong black woman was initially conceived of by black women themselves, its popularity on TV and film was mostly influenced by white and or male filmmakers. And while these famous films have been enjoyed by black women and feature powerhouse performances by black actresses, I just believe that anything is possible, you know, anything. Their success also shows how so-called mainstream audiences prefer to see black women as supernaturally strong, inspirational characters who are able to endure extreme suffering. They kill my son. And still be okay. My boy Trelaw always said, we gonna have a writer in the family one day. I guess it's gonna be me. It's also notable that these are the performances that tend to be recognized by awards. Of the 12 black women ever nominated for the Best Actress Academy Awards, at least eight of them were for roles that could be characterized as strong black women. And these accolades implicitly encourage movies to keep presenting this one type of narrative. I'm gonna be free or die. 
Ultimately, the strong black woman trope does very little to improve conditions for actual black women. It doesn't call for change, just offers a feel-good celebration of this character's exceptional strength. At worst, these depictions risk implying that black women do not need systemic change because they're strong enough to withstand society's abuse. We may lose the small battles, but win the big war. Meanwhile, the world itself debunks the assumption that what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. In reality, suffering and abuse can frequently lead to trauma, mental illness, and other toxic cycles. I was raised on TV and I was conditioned to believe that every black woman over 50 is a cosmic mentor. The strong black woman is also commonly featured as the sidekick or supporting character to a white and or male protagonist. In 2011's The Help, Viola Davis plays Abilene, a black domestic worker who helps a white novelist expose the abuse of black maids in their town. I thought I might write my stories down and read them to you. And no different than writing down my prayers. Though Davis's performance was well received, many critics pointed out that Abilene's strength mostly served to inspire the film's white protagonist, played by Emma Stone. Don't give up on this mosquito. And the movie was accused of whitewashing the civil rights movement and downplaying the racism experienced by domestic workers in the South. White women always want to be friends with their maid. In Ghost, Whoopi Goldberg plays Oda May, a psychic who connects with a white man's ghost to help him avenge his death. Here, Oda May's strength literally serves the white protagonist in that she acts as his only physical presence. I need you to tell Molly what I'm saying, but you have to tell her word for word, all right? Yes. He wants me to tell you what he's saying word for word. In the curious case of Benjamin Button, Taraji P. Henson's Queenie lends her strength to raise Benjamin Button as her own, even while running her own business as a black woman in the 1920s. You are as ugly as an old pot, but you still a child of God. Henson also stars in Hidden Figures as a computer at NASA who's instrumental in both the rocket launch and the life of her rundown white male boss. Who makes the rules? You, sir, you are the boss. You just have to act like one. Sir. In all of these examples, the strong black woman is used as a tool for the white protagonist. Even though she herself is suffering from discrimination, she offers up her never-ending strength to help them. You know she in some kind of trouble. Well, who's gonna take a minute if we don't? As TV producers put a higher value on diverse casting, the strong black woman has cropped up as a supporting character across genres and in roles where her race is rarely, if ever, mentioned. I'm not exactly white, in case you haven't noticed. These examples often serve as strong and selfless helpers to the show's protagonists, while their personalities are rarely fleshed out with the same depth and complexity that the main characters are. All right, so <laughs> now let's talk about my problems. So, sorry, what? Well, you know, I, I, I just helped you with your stuff, and I thought we could talk about my problems. In The Walking Dead, Danaya Guerrera's badass, sword-wielding Michonne displays unflinching spirit and exceptional physical strength. But anger makes you stupid. Stupid gets you killed. But she ends up using these assets to repeatedly save the other characters. I can't stop you. But you can't stop me from helping you making her feel almost like a machine compared to the more three-dimensional characters who get the opportunity to make mistakes. I shot Daryl. Don't be too hard on yourself. We've all wanted to shoot Daryl. In Suits, Gina Torres's Jessica Pearson is the powerful boss of the two white male protagonists. I just kicked your ass. So now, you're going to stay here, be humble, and learn your goddamn place but she acts as a sort of maternal figure to those leads, keeping them in line and swooping in to save them when they need it. In Person of Interest, Taraji P. Henson's Joss Carter has a strong moral compass, general fearlessness, and impeccable grasp of professionalism. We've been working together for a while now. My friends call me Lionel. You got a first name? Sure. Detective. All of which are there primarily to make her a valuable resource for the series protagonists in their work. I got it, Pitt Finch. I sure like her style. As Harris Perry describes, the strong black woman's power is only celebrated when it is in service to others. Go find your life, Miss Henson, speaking on yet another strong black woman she's played. 
the names Cookie ask about me. Theorize that audiences are only able to relate to Cookie on Empire because she went to prison to help her family. Telling Vulture, I think that's why people are drawn to her. I was afraid when I read the script that people were going to hate her. She went to jail for selling crack. Moreover, Harris Perry argues that strong black women are validated, admired, and praised based on how they behave, not on who they are. Loss of social standing is an ever-present threat for individuals whose social acceptance is based on behavioral traits rather than unconditional human value. For the strong black woman, what she does becomes who she is, and most of these narratives devote little attention to her inner life for its own sake. Of course, the strong black woman is not limited to TV and film. Countless celebrities, public figures, and everyday women are characterized and even think of themselves in this way. Black women are magic and we rock mostly because we are resilient. We have a long history of taking what we have to make what we need. Recently though, many have started to take a closer look at the psychological and emotional strain of trying to live up to this myth in real life. The conception that black women are inherently strong has historically discouraged many from seeking mental health counseling. You got a lot to hate yourself for, but needing help ain't one of them. Psychological studies suggest that while black women have one of the highest rates of depression, they are undertreated for mental health as a demographic. The conception of superhuman black female strength also poses a danger from outside the black community. A survey of American medical trainees found that half believe in certain myths such as black people having thicker skin or less sensitive nerve endings. These misconceptions could lead to undertreatment of black patients and even prove fatal for black mothers who experience undertreatment during childbirth. I was grateful that she had the wherewithal to speak up because she knew her body better than any of us. As cultural opinion begins to shift, some narratives are also starting to reflect the toll that embodying this perfect image can take on black women. You think I just woke up one day and poof, I look like this? No, it takes work, drive, sacrifice to be a woman. On Grey's Anatomy, after countless seasons of ruling with an iron fist. Rule number one, don't bother sucking up. I already hate you, that's not gonna change. Chandra Wilson's Miranda Bailey has started to grapple with her own mental health and stress. And I cope with it. Every day I take my medication and I'm doing great, but sometimes I need help. Bailey's storyline is especially powerful because the character is still as strong and formidable as ever. But the portrait acknowledges the need for this personality to take time to focus on herself. And yes, I have obsessive compulsive disorder. I am not ashamed of that, but it's not my story. It's just one piece. On how to get away with murder, Annalise's iconic scene of taking off her wig became an image that encapsulated the vulnerability of the strong black woman. It is about uncovering and feeling comfortable with the way we are and the way we look when we're in private. Other narratives have gone beyond the strong black woman by allowing this character to be more than perfect. On another Shondaland hit drama, Scandal, Kerry Washington's Olivia Pope, who also happened to be the first black female lead of a network drama in 40 years, initially appeared to be the textbook strong black woman. It's handled. Lending her strength to propping up the corrupt American Republic. This. I am many things, stupid is not one of them. But Olivia quickly complicates this picture through a growing list of selfish acts, not least of which is her long-standing affair with the president. My whole life is you. I can't breathe because I'm waiting for you. You own me, you control me. I. I belong to you. So as she grapples with her many mistakes and sometimes reprehensible actions, Olivia Pope is afforded something that's long been denied to the strong black woman, moral ambiguity. Washington gets to portray the kind of messy, flawed anti-hero that's been getting male actors acclaim for decades. So you think I've suddenly turned into some power-hungry boss bitch who thinks she can play and use the president like a pawn? Bits. I've been doing that for years. More recently, Washington also plays a more complicated take on the strong black woman as Mia Warren in Hulu's Little Fires Everywhere. Throughout the first season, the audience is made to question whether Mia's actions are entirely noble or right. We have always had enough. What, what have I had? But this complexity makes Mia an interesting and real person. And through Mia, the show illuminates that, for the most part, the ideal of the strong black woman is impossible to live up to. You didn't make good choices. You had good choices. 
options that being rich and white and entitled gave you. As black women are finally being given more opportunities to write and produce their own stories, we finally started to see protagonists who eschew the strong black woman trope altogether without falling into harmful stereotypes. I need the courage you had to tell them you were the son of God. And I need the strength that you had to make the switch from R&B to hip hop when they doubted you. Crucially, shows like Insecure and Chewing Gum showcase the power of media that features more than one black woman. I don't wanna be the voice of all black people. Similarly to when stories with only one featured female character use her to represent all women, narratives with only one black woman implicitly force that character to stand in for her entire demographic. I would like to explore the idea of tokenism in the workplace. Like the white population, we are diverse within ourselves. There is not a monolithic black experience. Lupita Nyong'o praised her 2018 film Black Panther for the way it showcased black women in multiple positions of power. Women are allowed to realize their full potential and that's what Ryan wanted to show and, and he committed to having that number of women around him. I invite you to my lab and you just kick things around. So, as more black women get the opportunity to tell their unique stories, we can look forward to a greater variety of representations of what it means to be a black woman, ones which aren't defined by struggle and hardship. Is you Khaleesi or that other bitch whose name I don't remember? We might see more stories about these characters' joys. My girlfriend. Narratives should help us envision a world where black women don't need to be so strong and we can celebrate them for everything else they can be. I would make a great queen because I am so stubborn. Ah, if, if that's what I wanted.